Jason, you've been at this for a while, so let, let's start from the beginning. What, how did this get going? Well, about two years ago, actually June 1st, I'll say it's two years uh, ago, I started this company. What happened was I liked to barbecue, but I could never find anything to clean my barbecue with that was natural and safe. So I went around to the stores and all I found were imported products from outside the province, outside the country, from overseas, a lot of plastics and a lot of dangerous bristles. I didn't like that. So I called my dad up and said, do you have a piece of juniper? That's how it started. Why juniper? So that's a great question, Dave. Um, so juniper is a very special wood. First off, the word juniper, actually it's tamarack is the type of tree. We call it juniper Newfoundland. But tamarack trans translates into uh, wood for snowshoes. That's the actual translation. So it's kind of neat. It's Canadian. It's very local to us. Uh, it also has some very interesting properties. It doesn't rot, it doesn't get moldy, and it's known to neutralize bacteria. So making it a very you know, suitable wood for a food grade purpose or cleaning your barbecue grill. In Newfoundland, you may know people that burn juniper in their wood stoves, in their sheds, whatnot. Juniper is known to burn really, really hot. Well, that also means that it likes to resist heat. So it doesn't burn as easy as some other woods which means it lasts longer on a barbecue. So you're from here in Deer Lake, and you've turned this into a local business. Yeah. How's it been going? Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been having a ball. So it is a family business. My dad, my uncle, my mom, my wife, my sister, my cousins, we're all involved in it somehow. Uh, we have one non-family family member on the team who's in St. John's, handles our social media, Leslie. Um, but the rest of it is a family business that happens right here. The west coast of Newfoundland has been extremely supportive of this project. Once we got going, um, they really helped us, gave us the, uh, what, the energy and the uh, support to grow it bigger. We now sell our product all over the world. We've sold to every continent except Antarctica. We've sold to over 70 countries. We have over 400 stores throughout North America that retail our product. Uh, every Sobeys in Atlantic Canada carries our product, and we're just about to announce another national dealer coming online that we have a waiting on the PO, so I don't want to jinx it, and a third national uh, company that wants to carry our product. That'll likely be a 2020. So, yeah, it creates employment in the local area. And it really, really works, because I know, I mean, I've been using one for over a year, ever since I heard about it in the beginning. And like I said, it works. I can't say anything more about it than that. It, it does. And that's what I tell people. It's not gimmicky. It doesn't have a whole bunch of other gadgets and all that kind of stuff. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Clean your barbecue grill safely with a natural product. It leaves nothing behind at all. It just takes the dirt off, cleans the grill, and then you can throw your steak or whatever else you cook on it on the grill and not have to worry about those dangerous bristles. And that, I was just going to bring that up because you mentioned in the beginning about the materials. Uh, there's been so much over the past few years about these bristles and causing health problems and, and dangerous, etc. And this is, like you said, all natural and not a problem. It, it, correct. Um, I went On Monday, I went to visit a little boy in Halifax, uh, Brady Tovel. Uh, I think that's his last name, I'm forgetting, but Brady anyway. Uh, I went to visit him and his, and his family. A couple days before, or the weekend before, Brady ingested a wire bristle. He had to get rushed to the IWK. They had no idea what the issue was. They thought it was an appendix attack. The surgeons looked, couldn't find anything wrong with his appendix, but when they were doing the surgery, they happened to notice a bristle that punctured his bowel. And they removed it, and thank goodness he's okay, but if they hadn't have found it, we don't know what the outcome would have been. So I was over to visit Brady, and actually for the month of June, what we're doing is anyone that orders our product online, we're donating $10 in Brady's name to the IWK for every online order. You just don't stop. Yeah, we, we're, we're trying to, we really want to change the barbecue industry. There was another lady in the UK just yesterday that ingested one, became ill. This doesn't need to happen anymore. There are better solutions. Buying cheap and foreign objects, <laughs> such as metal and whatever else, is not needed anymore. We have a locally produced solution made right here uh, that employs local people, and all the money stays here. 
which is a great segue for what I was about to say to you next. When we go through the door that's behind us right here, your workshop area. Door number one or door number two? <laughs> we'll take them all. <laughs> <laughs> when we go through that door, uh, just run through uh, so that our cameraman here can get some idea and we can piece it all together. Uh, you've got your whole operation in this building. So what, how does it start? You've got your slabs of wood yep. from the beginning and go from there. Right. So how it actually begins is we uh, contract harvesters in the woods to, to cut the actual tamarack or juniper trees. So we get lo big logs. And those logs then go to the mill and they get turned into um, live edge slabs. And then those slabs are kiln and dried. We bring them down to about a 6% moisture content. Once that's done, they get sanded the same as if you were doing a hardwood floor. Uh, we take that product back to our shop, and then we run it through our process. Starts by today, I'll, I'll, I'll t it starts by turning it into a 16-inch long uh, uh, blank, mm -hmm. and then we shape that blank all done with just hand tools. Like I say, hand tools, but like table saws and chop saws. And, and belt sanders. We turn that blank then into the shape of a barbecue scraper. We then sand it so there's no rough edges and it feels good on the hand. Then we hand stamp it with uh, our logo. It's burned into the actual product. Mm -hmm. Then we dip it in a high grade cutting board oil. We let it dry for about 24 hours. Then we add a tag, put it in a box, and ship it to our customers. And when all that's done, you end up with one of these. You end up with exactly this, Dave, that's that's it. Isn't it amazing? It, it looks so beautiful. Um, I love the grain patterns. We can pick any single one of these, and every one is unique and different uh, in its own way, but every one is beautiful. I have a stack of them at home that I'm not willing to sell. I just every now and then run across one. I'm like, oh, no, I can't sell it. It's like they become little children to me or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to actually add that into your business uh, thing here with your poster and that's yeah. saying no two alike no two alike absolutely no two alike uh what, el what else happens is i'll show you this one here i gotta show you this one so sometimes the wood looks like it's almost like it's you know glued together yeah. but we don't actually glue the wood together uh the juniper barbecue scrapers are 100 percent solid piece of wood there's nothing done with this other than cutting the solid piece of wood however Sometimes we have wood that can't become barbecue scrapers. It just doesn't make the cut. Um, and what we do then is we take it and we laminate it and we produce some other uh, alternative barbecue accessories. Uh, bottle openers, we have a wine caddy, and we're always thinking of new creative ways that something that fits with the barbecue theme though. We're, we are a barbecue company. You just got ahead of me again because on the table over here there's a, a whole array of different things that you've turned the, the, well I can't say scrap, but this is too nice to say scrap. Yeah, but the pieces that can't become barbecue scrapers that are, are useful become other things. And we're working with a bunch of local companies to do innovative ideas and we, we, we haven't quite got everything sorted, but if you go down to the local um, brewery in Corner Brook, like Bootleg Brewery, their tap wall, that's actually a piece of juniper from us. Uh, if you go over to the uh, West, uh, West, no, uh, what's it called, Westgate, uh, next door to the brewery, the cocktail lounge there. That's all decorated in our juniper. If you go out to the brewery in Stephenville um, called Secret Cove, their uh, table, the bar top, is juniper that was, you know, to be, you know, eventually would have yeah. became barbecue scrapers, except it became, you know, their bar top. Um, the mill in Cormac, uh, or sorry, the brewery in Cormac, Crooked Feeder Brewery, the last bit of wood to go through Crooked Feeder building when it was a sawmill was our juniper. So for some reason we've become very ingrained with the uh, microbrew culture and we're starting to do a lot more projects with microbreweries throughout Atlantic Canada and Eastern Canada. We haven't really tapped into Western Canada yet, but we're doing a lot of stuff with the microbreweries. Boy, you're, you are a great success story. I mean, I'm impressed. There, there's no stopping you. Yeah, I'm a little bit energetic at times. I, I feel tired at times though. I just got off the road from uh, I spent 20 days, 6,000 kilometers, went to Canada's largest barbecue competition in Ottawa called Capital Barbecue Fest. Then I did some rib fests. Now I'm home for a week, and then I go back on the rib fest tour again for another three rib fests on the mainland before I get back home again. 
yet again. I thought you were going to say you just came back from every continent except Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to Antarctica and bring a scraper. Not, not a lot of barbecuing down there. No, apparently not. Penguins don't barbecue much. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else can I say to you? I mean, it's it's a great success, and, and you're going upward all the time. Uh, I am, and i got to say it's thanks to the people on the West Coast. I mean, the West Coast of Newfoundland has been so generous to me. The local retailers in the area, Georgia Ski World, were the first people to retail our product for us. And they've just been gangbusters selling our products. So if you're looking for a barbecue scraper, in the local area, we have Georgia Ski World, uh, Rugged Edge. Uh, we have uh, Coleman's, Sobeys, Foodlands. So there's lots of places to buy a locally produced barbecue scraper made from materials that all come from within 100 miles of this footprint where we are right now and it employs all local people and every single dollar from this project stays in Atlantic Canada and is or in, in, in the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. I say Atlantic Canada because I travel a lot through Atlantic Canada but it all stays here on the West Coast. We spend every single dollar we can locally. Everything. That's how we live. That's, that is great, right? I was going to say, I, I said at the beginning that I had been using one for over a year. Uh, my wife bought a couple before Christmas for stocking stuffers. So, I mean, you don't have to convince me about this. I, I, I'm sold. Thanks, Dave. You, you need a couple more now. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> Christmas time tends to be extremely busy for us for stocking stuffers. I wonder why. They, they ship well and they're like, this time of the year, what's really important for us right now is getting the message out about the dangerous bristles, making sure yeah. that no one else gets sick. There's just way too many people that are get being injured because of something that, that should be enjoyable, but instead is causing them injury, and there's absolutely no reason. So this is a solution to that problem. It's basic, it solves its the need, it does exactly what it's supposed to do and clean your barbecue grill. It doesn't do anything else. That's do, it. Do you sell from here? I mean, is, this is your production. Do you, you don't sell from here, do you? Um, n no, to date, well, I mean, if someone comes through the door, yes, we'll take care of them. Uh, but you'll notice this, like the walls that we're doing in the doors, this is being done to open the storefront. Uh, so it's going to be have a barbecue-centric theme soon enough, but as I can, you can tell, I'm a little bit busy, and I can't solve all the problems that I'm trying to. Right now, my problem that I want to solve is getting the message out about the dangerous bristles. Uh, then we're going to add in a storefront in here and likely sell locally produced products that align with the barbecue industry. Again, that would be you know spices, rubs, sauces, barbecue scrapers, bottle openers, you know things of that nature. Uh, maybe a steak. May, maybe, maybe. No, nah, I won't sell steaks from in here. <laughs> but, uh, fingers crossed, though, I might be able to sell micro beer, uh, not served, but I'm hoping to be able to sell like a pre bottled uh, you know, growlers and grunters of. Oh, micro stop. Beer. Okay, that's stop. That, that's it. <laughs> I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, this used to be a liquor store. This was the well. No, store we're store. not going off on that tangent at all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. All the best. Uh, same there, buddy. <laughs>